In this video, we're going to take a look at the Zender Super Bass Pro 2000 unit. I have had this unit for a very long time. I've used it both as UPS, as portable power, running water pumps, fridge, freezer, all sorts of things, and it works really, really well. But there are some quirks that you need to be aware with this unit, and hopefully those don't also show up in the brand new Super Bass V the 6400 and 4600 version from Zender. But I wanna take a look at this so we can see if this may be the right fit for you. My name's Ben, this is the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel. I love all things preparedness, but especially backup power. During blackouts, it's the number one thing that most people need as power in order to get their lives stable again. So looking at a unit like the Superbase Pro may give us an option that could be good for emergency backup power for running things like refrigerators, Wi-Fi, freezers, CPAP machines. So this could be a viable option. That's why we're gonna take a look at it. So stick around for this review of the Superbase Pro 2000. So if this is your first time to the channel, I review tons of these solar backup power stations, and I even use multiple different versions for backing up my entire house. One in particular, but this video is focused on the Superbase Pro and to see if it's a good option. This has a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, which is easily enough for running anything you would run on a normal wall outlet. So basically, if you could plug it into an outlet in your house, then you can plug it into this and run it. That includes electric heaters, window air conditioners, fridge, freezer, lights, fans, Wi-Fi, TV, all of those things. The real question is, how long can it run that equipment? So this has a built-in 2,096 watt-hour battery capacity. That generally will run something like a refrigerator for about 20 to 21 hours nonstop with no solar input. Now, if you were to add a freezer onto that, you're gonna cut that time in half. If you were to run an electric heater, like this one right here, you'd be able to run it for almost two hours with how much power it uses. So it's generally not a good idea to run space heaters off of smaller power stations like this, simply for the fact that they won't last long enough to really make a big difference. Yes, it may warm up our room if in a little bit of time, but because it's drawing so much power, within a couple of hours it's gonna turn off and then that room's gonna get cold and then you're just without power until the next day when you've got the solar panels working. So this is not something that you would want to run heavy loads on for an extended period of time. Now I've used this to run things like my fuel pump. I have an off-grid fuel pump set up. We keep about 500 gallons of gasoline and 500 gallons of diesel, because that's what our vehicles use. We keep that on hand for long-term emergencies. And this is capable of running those pumps. Those pumps usually only run for about a minute to be able to refuel our vehicles. But for simple things like fridge, freezer, TV, Wi-Fi, and so on, this is definitely a good option. It's very reliable, but there are some quirks you have to know about, and I'm gonna get into that here shortly. Now on the side here, we have different inputs. We have an XT60, which is a 60 volt, 10 amp input for solar, and this works really well to get up to 600 watts of solar input. This is a C14 receptacle, a C13 plug is a very common pl power plug that you will find for different items or appliances. So that's really nice that it's so common. It has a ground screw right here, so you can be grounded. And this does have a built-in UPS feature. So one of the ways that this is very commonly used by customers that I know who have them is they use them for sump pumps and refrigerators. So for example, there's a customer who has a sump pump and a freezer in their basement utility room. So this stays plugged in to the grid at all times to keep it 100% charged up and then also has the sump pump and the freezer plugged into it. And so in the event that grid power goes down, this is already running that equipment and the UPS feature turns on in less than a second to make sure that the fridge and the sump pump continue to work. So if there's heavy rain or the downstairs bathrooms get used, whatever the reason is that they need to get water out from the basement back outside, then this will continue to run it. And this would run a setup like that for at least 24 hours quite easily, which means you could have one full day of darkness or no solar panels connected, and it should be able to run it for that whole period of time. Now it does have a wireless app, and that was very tricky for me to set up. I've set up many different systems with many different apps, and this one was difficult. The trick I found when following the instructions is there'll be an option for you to switch your Wi-Fi connection and you want to click remain on Wi-Fi rather than switch once or switch automatically. And that will allow you to connect to the app on your phone for the Superbase Pro. And then you have the option to adjust when the screen turns on and off, if the unit itself will ever turn off, 
how much power you can put out because it has a power lifting mode where this is rated to 2000 watts output, but in extreme conditions and for short periods of time, you can actually run up to 3000 watts off of it, which is pretty impressive for a small system like this to be able to do that. I don't know what you would normally plug into one of these outlets where you would need 3000 watts, but it has the capability to do it. There are two USB-C 100 watt outputs, which is very nice, and then two USB-C 20 watt output, which is really nice. There are no USB-A connectors on here, and really in modern times, we're looking at mostly USB-C, but Zender understands that many devices still use USB-A, and so they include an adapter that can plug into here so you can still use USB-A. It has a telescoping handle, which makes it very easy to roll around with the built-in wheels here on the side. But for me, with all of these systems, it always comes down to the solar input. That's what matters most to me, is its rechargeability. Because just like a gas generator, you can just put more fuel in it and it keeps running. The solar is the only way to be able to recharge this off grid. And so I need to know that it can recharge quickly from solar while still running my equipment. So let's go ahead and test that. So I've got the Zender Superbase Pro 2000 here charging from solar. Now I currently only have 1200 watts connected to it. And we're almost up to 1200 watts because we're getting a break in the clouds. It is a rather cloudy day today. So we're basically at 1100 watts right now. And I'm using this MC4 to C13 adapter. Now this C13 plug normally goes into a C14 receptacle. And that is what you use on the Superbase Pro 2000 for wall charging. So this adapter right here is the only adapter and this is the only unit I've ever seen that uses an AC input port to allow a DC current to go into it. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. I'm going to plug this in. I've got six panels. I've got 120 volts on this right here. And it says that that outlet is rated up to 160 volts as a working voltage. And this working voltage is gonna be around 100 volts, but it's open circuit voltage is gonna be about 120. So we were just getting about 1100 watts. In addition to that, there's another solar input port that uses this XT60 connector, and it's just XT60 to MC4. This is a great connector, and with this, I can get up to 600 watts of solar input. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this as well. Currently getting 950 watts. We've got 600 watts connected to this right here. Let's see what we get up to. Holy cow. Almost 1900 watts, 1850 right here. That is incredible. That means this could easily be charged in a single hour. That is seriously impressive. I don't even have the maximum solar panels that can be connected to this other connector here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more panel to this major input for the C13 and see what happens. So I'm getting 550 watts from the 600 watt array right here. Now I've got seven 200 watt panels on the other one. Probably lost the window because the clouds are starting to come back in a bit. And it looks like our major solar array just shut off. It didn't work. So maybe it can't go above 120 volts on that input. Maybe the information's wrong. That doesn't make sense because that's what's in the user manual. Oh, it just turned back on by itself. Let's see what happens. Well, that's really too bad. We didn't get to test it with full sun, but we can still get a thousand watts input right now with 2000 watts connected, which is very impressive on a cloudy day because we're getting 50% of the rated output from the panels to go into here, which is pretty incredible. So now I'm gonna turn on AC out so that way we can run things while this is charging. Oh, it's not staying on, that's interesting. This is supposed to be able to function as a UPS, which is an uninterrupted power supply, and I've used it that way before. There's no reason that the AC power coming out shouldn't be able to remain on with especially just solar input going in, but it will not stay on. I'm going to disconnect the C13 adapter and try this again. Oh, it flickered for a second. I'm not sure what it's gonna do here. Yeah, okay, now we're getting an output. 1,000 watts, but only 200 watts input in. So that's definitely not very good because it's cloudy. We've only got 600 watts. So you can only do solar input in with AC power out from this XT60 right here. You cannot have this bringing in solar power. So now what I wanna see is if we can bring in wall charging into this 
while doing AC power out. All right, so I've got this. You can see the orange light is on. I'm going to plug this in. There is no solar attached right now. Have the AC on, and we should be getting wall power in in just a second. Yep, see so UPS feature turns on. We're getting input and output at the same time. So that's very interesting with the Superbase Pro. You can do AC power in while doing AC power out. And I've got just an electric heater connected here, but you cannot use this right here to bring DC power in through that same input while getting AC power out. The only way you can add solar is with this XT60 to get AC out. So now I wanna see, can we do AC power out with AC power in and add solar at the same time? It should be able to do this. Well, our input definitely went up and we're charging with both solar on the XT60 and then wall charging. Very interesting that it's set up this way. I'm very surprised that we can't run this while using this major solar input right here. So there you have it guys. That is how well it works with solar. Uh, it's very unfortunate that we can't do both of the solar inputs and get AC power out. That is honestly a big problem for me because you can only get 600 watts in, which normally is okay because that means you could charge this in under four hours. But unless you have ideal solar conditions, you're really not going to be able to fully recharge it while still running a fridge and a freezer. And to me, that's a big concern. So if you do live in a sunny area, then it's going to be probably just fine because you're not likely going to drain this to 0% every single night. However, if you live in a place like I do, where it's about 50-50 as far as sun and clouds, then it is always important to be able to put in more solar. And I would still like to be able to run that equipment while recharging from solar. And we know we can get amazing solar input on this using both solar inputs, but I can't continue to run things off the outlets here on the side. So that's a big concern. Everything else has been great. Once I got the app working, it wasn't an issue. So overall, I do give this unit a thumbs up, not two thumbs up, simply for the fact that I can't run both solar inputs and get AC out, but I can say it is a good unit. It is reliable and works well. So for those reasons, I give it a thumbs up. I think backup power is one of the most important things, not the most important thing when it comes to emergency preparedness. Obviously food, water, shelter, those things take precedence over something like this, but those things are relatively easy to get figured out. And usually the next big step is backup power. And I like these options because I can use solar panels, which I can count on on most days where I can get some charge. Whereas during emergencies, I never know if I can get propane or gasoline. Always remember to prepare for self-rescue. I'll see you guys in the next video.